of course, but sometimes for your programming, you'll want to uh, concatenate together the error line, the message, uh, severity, state, these sorts of things. For this, we're just going to use the error message, okay? And then we've got it. Okay, press F5. We've got it. So, now we can come back and update this. But this time, instead of returning an integer, we're going to be returning a string. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get rid of this. We won't need that now. Okay. And we need to set this up again. And I am specifically choosing uh, dates that I know will fail, that we did already. I'm well aware of that. We did that on purpose. Now, all right, so we're fully set up. We're going to try and push the same archiving that we did before uh, from September 1st to 30th. And here's our error message coming back out as an out parameter. This should fail because this is a violation of the primary key for the table. Let's have a look. And it is. Here's the error message, violation of primary key constraint, PK trans, and I don't even need to go further with that. And the return value is not good, which is great. We were looking for that. So that means that our catch block was hit. Okay? And it worked. And likewise, uh, we know that the transaction then was rolled back. I can put a little message in just to reassure us, but I can tell you for sure that it, it did not run. Now, there's another way that you may see some programmers or DBAs do this, where um, rather than using the begin and end try, um, or maybe even with it, some of them, depends, it depends on who you're talking to, they will do something with the error variable. So the traditional way to do this, it would be to catch this environment variable called error, which is zero when you succeed and not zero when you fail. And that's traditional. So that would come instead of the try catch block. That was the traditional way to do the store procedures. So then um, when you would go through this, just to demo what that would look like, that would be gone. Of course, the catch block would be trying all this to be gone, and we would capture this immediately with some variable, and I'm making this up as I go because I'm not going to do this, and then you would have to say if my var is not equal to zero, then you'd have to tell it to return or something. Do a rollback and return. Okay. So that was the traditional way to do this. Again, I don't support that. Best practices now are to use the try catch blocks. And again, you wouldn't have to call it because you can rely on the fact that when anything comes up, you're going to get out of dodge fast which is what you need. You don't need the next transaction to run. Um, some people like to feel better with save points for that. Um, I'm not so much a big believer in that. Depends. I mean, you, you do what you're told where you work. But um, I say that you uh, have a transaction and you run everything in it. And if you have a problem, then you immediately hit the catch block and you roll it back. Okay, um, so let's do the second part of this then, and let's move on. All right, so let's finish this off, and I'll mention one other thing before we do, and we'll wind this up. 
say copied from history remove Yeah. All right, and so that's the way that'll go. Now, the one other thing I wanted to mention before we do our delete statement and we finish this out is there's one other thing that uh, try catch blocks do for you that in the past you had to handle yourself. Um, some of the older programmers will be familiar with the raise error uh, method where once you knew you encountered a problem, you had to throw it and return it back with the raise error method. That's not required anymore with try catch block, and I showed that uh, here when it's returned in the error message variable. So uh, this makes it very convenient for uh, application programmers then to capture this and to decide if they want to write it out in their logs and uh, deal with it as they will. You've given it to them in a place where they can read it, and they can deal with it, and um, it's much more convenient for everybody. So this is definitely a best practice. Okay, so let's finish this out. Um, so what we need to do now is delete from the old table, which is transaction history. Okay. And you know what? We can copy these same conditions and the same parameter because what that which we transferred, we're going to remove. Just like that. And there will be only one from needed. And that'll do it. All right, so with F5, we need to... Find our mistake. Oh, yes, we're not allowed to alias in that condition, which means we need to remove it from here as well. And that'll do it. Okay. So, since we did September, um, let's go ahead and do October then. Okay, and I'm well aware that we haven't deleted that, but again, I rationalize here that we're in development. Um, <clears throat> and after the video, I will go delete that out <laughs> to clean up, so I'm, I'm well aware of that. But we need to test that to delete and that the uh, insert work. And if we really wanted to be fancy, of course, we could grab the identity row. Um, again, we're inserting a lot, so you wouldn't be doing that here. But uh, there is a variable for that. All right, so let's go ahead and run this then. And we're going to prove that this works. So it should be in one table, but not the other. Uh, let's see, so if we did that there, we can do this here. And that should run, and we should only see it in one table. Let's see what happens. Okay, null is the error message. Return value is zero. Sounds good. Let's see what we've got. We moved over, and I'm not going to need this anymore. Okay, first off, transaction history archive should get what we're looking for. Descending, and we start at 1030. That's the max date. That looks good. Now, let's look at... Production transaction history here. Now, they're in both, and this is where I'm going to pay for not deleting that data. We're going to do that quickly. And we can just steal this.
Okay. All right. Let's just remove that quickly and we'll be done. And all that, like that. Okay. That's good to go. And it was September we wanted to get rid of. Okay. First off, let's clean this out. So we transferred just a few rows, about 10,000 there. Okay. And now we're fit to do this one above. And this is not to be run twice. By transaction date. Okay. Well, I'd say it worked, except we forgot there were 31 days in that month. <laughs> but we can clearly see that it's not there. For December 30th or better, uh, it worked. So for all practical purposes, I would lay that at the feet of the application or the person writing the script. <laughs> but it did work. So um, that would wrap up that store procedure. So this is ready to go. And we could submit this then for the programmer to use and for testing and production. So that's how we do store procedures with best practices. And uh, thanks for joining us.